Ladies and gentlemen and children of all ages, welcome to the official tour of heaven. My name is John the Apostle, and I'll be your tour guide today. We'll be leaving in a matter of moments, so please find a seat and get comfortable for the next 15 minutes or so. I'd like to remind you that this is a visionary experience, and while going through heaven today, you will not actually be able to leave us and step into heaven. There remains only the usual way of entering paradise, and that is, of course, through death. And as far as I know, none of you are scheduled for that today. <clears throat> um, so, um, just to remind you, uh, the book of Revelation is a visionary, figuratively written book so when we find, for example, in the first chapter of the seven lampstands that are there, soon we find that there are actually seven different cities mentioned in the book of Revelation. And when our Lord Jesus returns on the last day, and the scriptures say he will have seven horns on his head, seven eyes, and seven double-edged flaming swords from his mouth, that of course means that he will have all power the sign of a, of a horn. And if you've ever been gored with a bull, you understand what I'm saying. And seven eyes means he will see everything on the last judgment day. No one will get anything by him. And those seven double-edged swords, the flaming swords coming from his mouth, mean that his words of judgment will be absolute truth, law and gospel. So without any further ado, uh, we will begin. As we're approaching the city, you can't help but notice its magnificent size and brilliance. And if the scenes you will experience seem a little bit distorted to you today, remember that the Bible tells us that now we see only in a blurred glass dimly, then we shall see face to face on the last day. Up to this point, remember that the images of heaven that the Lord has given you include the golden interiors of the Holy of Holies in the temple in Jerusalem and also the chancel area of your very own sanctuary. They were designed to help describe the magnificence of heaven. Now, as we enter the city, let us draw near to your attention to the pearly gates as we pass through them. Please, arms and legs inside the vehicle at all times. And you see the road paved with gold in front of you, as well as an enormous amount of crystals and um, emeralds and sapphires and jewels and rubies. They are a reminder and a picture to us of the vast glory of heaven far beyond the wealth of any person on earth. Please note as we pass them that many, many people here look somewhat translucent since they are only their souls. Their bodies will not actually be joined to their souls until the last day, of course. Also remember that as these people appeared in life, uh, many of them were missing limbs or they were unable to walk. And now, as you can plainly see, they are whole and in perfect condition. We will not actually be able to hear them speaking, but notice that they are all speaking plainly to one another as there are no longer hundreds of different languages and thousands of different dialects that divide them. Notice also that they are all freely interacting with one another, although they are of every race, tribe, and nation on earth. As we pull in now very closely, uh, now I would like you to look at their faces. You may recognize some people here, perhaps a loved one or a relative. Don't be surprised if you see a few people here that you never thought would be in heaven. Some who rejected God, um, for most of their lives finally were broken by him through some illness or trouble which led them to finally see their own powerlessness and seek God for help. You will also look in vain for others' faces who you may have expected to see here. Well, some church members who were hypocrites or who refused to repent and believe in Christ are unfortunately in hell. It's not nearly as popular, but you might like to go on that tour. It will be coming up in the future, led by Milton, Dante, and C.S. Lewis. If you look to your immediate left, 
uh, you'll notice that the people here are wearing white robes. In fact, everyone is. One's garments in heaven reflect the life that an individual lived so as to say that a sin would appear as a spot or a stain. You might be wondering if these were regular ordinary people since their robes are completely white. And the answer is yes. They were sinners, but they have washed their robes in the blood of the Lamb. Or in other words, the blood of Jesus, the Lamb of God, has washed away all of their sins. Now they are holy and blameless and righteous because Christ Jesus shed his own blood for them and us on the cross, although our robes still have several stains on them. If some of the people here in heaven seem to be going home to those beautiful houses over there, well, that is correct. As we go by, maybe you can make out some names and addresses on them. You might even see your own name. I remember that Jesus told us that he was going to heaven to prepare a room, a place, a mansion for you, and nothing breaks or out here, um, doesn't wear out, it's wonderful. Um, there are no hardware stores for men to walk in all day. Um, I would especially like to draw to your attention the, f um, the fact that all of the people here in heaven are indeed smiling. Uh, in fact, they look very satisfied and happy opposed to the mistaken thinking that many of you have about heaven. Oh, I know you're thinking, how can any place where there is no chocolate, beer, fishing, cigars, TV, romance, or bowling be all that wonderful? Well, let me tell you that all of those things are not too important here, any more than you miss your first tricycle. Well, um, once a person is in heaven, they have moved on to far more interesting interests and activities, uh, talking with the prophets and the apostles and with God and watching him create new universes and helping him. Well, that's better than anything that you have here now on earth. The Bible says, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. You might also notice many other things that you will not see here in heaven, earthly things which are completely missing, and that's okay. There is no temple here. The people of the Old Testament and New Testament saw God's temple and the tabernacle as the presence of God. He revealed himself to them in the temple. The temple symbolized God's very presence, but the picture of the temple and God's presence is obsolete. It's unnecessary here. When the real presence of God is standing before you in heaven, you actually get a taste of heaven whenever you receive the real presence of Christ in the Lord's Supper. You'll notice, too, that there are no church buildings in heaven, of all things, no congregations of Methodists, Lutherans, Roman Catholics, Orthodox, or Baptists, only saints, the holy ones, there is no more division or false teaching here, at least, only truth. Even though it's quite bright here in heaven, uh, you'll notice that there is no sun here. The glory of God the Father and Jesus, the light of the world, give more than enough light to see. And there is no night, for God's brilliance never ceases. There are a few other things that you won't see in heaven. The Bible describes heaven as a place where there is no hunger or thirst, no death or mourning, no crying or pain. There is no need for restaurants, hospitals, counseling centers, or seminaries. Oh, off to the right here now, please. I don't miss that huge outdoor auditorium that looks like it could seat a billion people. Well, it can. And Christ Jesus, the victorious Son of God, is seated on the throne in the center there to help anyone, and the wonderful part of this auditorium is that every seat is a good seat, even the ones in the back. And unfortunately, like those of you who will be standing in long lines voting this week, there are no long lines to stand in to speak to Jesus. Even with all these people, you walk up and you're always first in line. And he'll explain to you all the mysteries of the universe or why certain things happened while you were on earth, some things that were very confusing or very painful. There are some really good seats there right next to him for the prophets and apostles uh, and the martyrs. Yes, the martyrs. 
If we get close, we can recognize a few of them there. Take a look. There's Isaiah, who was sawn in half for proclaiming God's word when it was not popular. There's Stephen, who was stoned to death. A few others of Jesus, 12 disciples, uh, who were clubbed to death, run through with a sword, crucified upside down. Uh, there's Jerome, who was torn apart and eaten by lions in the arena, sitting right there next to Justin, uh, who was wrapped in cloths by Nero, impaled on a post, and set ablaze along the road to Nero's house. There is Agatha, who was flayed alive with a sword, sitting right across from Wu, who was shot in the head quite recently because he refused to renounce Christ as his savior. There are several other empty seats there, perhaps, uh, one of you will occupy them one day. Oh, there are some other kinds of martyrs down on the other side here. I see Margaret, who was laughed at and thought crazy because she trusted in God when her husband and child died one winter. Uh, there's Gladys, who was made fun of because she wouldn't go along with the crowd. Um, I see Harold over there, who spoke out for Christ, even though the, uh, the talk show hosts made fun and jokes about him. And there's Marilyn, who could have cheated welfare and social security, but refused and died as a bag lady on the street. There in the back is old George, who was fired from his job because he wouldn't support his company's fraudulent insurance schemes. They said he was a loser. We look at things very differently here. Well, things are not always what they seem on earth. Oh, how did the Lord put it? Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way, they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Well, our tour of heaven is about finished here, and we'll be heading back in a few seconds. Uh, thank you, you've been a very wonderful group, but I, I need to tell you that a couple of you may be passing by this way sometime soon, so remain faithful and hang in there, no matter what happens. Just remember all those who have gone this way before you, and remember what Christ did for you on the cross to pay for your sin and give you this gift of heaven and eternal life. And if heaven still seems a little bit foggy and unclear to you, Remember that your most wonderful day on earth will be nothing compared to your worst day in heaven. Hopefully we will see you here again someday in God's time, not as a visitor, but as a real resident of heaven. Until then. Now may the peace of God that passes all human understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus to life everlasting.